the Well Technology and Drilling Network Group, and uh, I'll be the host today for, for this event. Some practicalities to start with. Um, the webinar will be recorded and will be made available through the FORCE website after the event. Um, for all not presenting, please mute your uh, microphone. And if you have questions, um, uh, please keep them until the end. We'll have some time for, for questions and the discussions afterwards. The topic for the day is uh, digital work instructions at the interface between the onshore and offshore organizations. As you know, in, uh, in drilling operations, um, <clears throat> In drilling operations, the, the instructions that we issue to the, to the drill crew is at the heart of the operations and it's of uh, special importance uh, to safe and efficient uh, execution of the operation. So it needs to be clear and, uh, and precise and provide just the right level of detail. And uh, we come across work instructions in many different forms from some verbal instructions with notes scribbled down on a piece of paper to paper copy uh, DOPs ranging from a couple of lines to, to many, many pages, uh, all the way to full digital solutions these days. But uh, I think at this core, the challenge remains uh, the same. It's providing the right level of detail uh, at the right time and managing change to, uh, uh, to that uh, information in a dynamic work environment like we have on the grill floor. So we have uh, three presentations today. Uh, we'll start with a presentation from uh, Petter Hockel. Uh, he's uh, a key account manager at Keystone, uh, proudly taking part in the digitalization of the oil and gas industry. In, uh, in the second presentation, Jan Arels Kappel and uh, Otto uh, Grinesland from Winter Saldea will share an operator's view on the recent implementation of uh, digital dopes. <clears throat> Uh, Jan Arild has a drilling engineering background and is currently working as uh, operations excellence manager, leading the digital transformation of uh, drilling and wells in Winter and Norge. And Otto has a background in computer science and he's working in uh, Jan Arild's group, uh, where he was and still is the focal point for the implementation of the digital dope project. And as the last presenter today, I'm happy that we have uh, Tor Tjelnes. He belongs to a shared uh, IT department working for Otfield Technology, Otfield Drilling and Otfield Ocean Wind. And he's spending his time as a project manager providing a digital solution. He will share a drilling contract as few uh, to complete the picture. <clears throat> and with that, uh, I would like to ask you, Petra, to share your screen and take it away. Perfect, thank you. Perfect. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, Garat, Bors, uh, Christian, thank you for uh, uh, the invitation. Um, and to any, anybody else, uh, hi everyone. Um, I'm Petter Hörkali, uh, Key Account Manager of um, Keystone. Um, been working in Keystone for, give or take, five years. Um, I was asked to talk a little bit about our journey, our process, and a little bit uh, about um, our products. Um, can get this to work. Perfect. Um, when I started in Keystone, we were six or seven people. Um, and at this point um, today, we are. Uh, 40,000, uh, 40,000, 40 plus with the possibility to uh, upscale if we need more hands on um, on a project. Um, the commercial uh, department um, is uh, based in Stavanger um, and um, uh, the development department in Kristiansand. Um, we are delivering, uh, delivering SaaS, so it's uh, so far as a service, uh, which means uh, field ready, out of the box uh, software. Um, and um, we will have a brief look into what these different types of software um, actually do later on. Uh, we can start a bit um, with our um, journey from uh, from start to, to where we are today. Um, so we started, um, uh, with uh, focusing on an application towards the um, oil uh, oil service uh, industry, um, 
we had an app called Tools. Um, it was more of a warehouse rental maintenance um, application, and we actually sold that code uh, this summer. So, uh, so that's not in our portfolio anymore. Um, and all of this was before we stumbled into a project with Echo BP in 2018, end of 2018, I think. Um, Echo BP wanted to uh, build their own uh, time planner, um, and we were asked to 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 build it. Um, and then in a joint pro project, we found out that okay, why don't we build a digital dope or wrap or procedure, um, so we can actually connect that to um, the time planner. Um, and then this project has grown to be uh, a major procedure project uh, internally, also in, in April BP, um, with connectors to Cabal. So if everything anything moves in in the time planner, then then it also moves in in, in the equipment need in in Cabal. And um, we built more apps connecting to this with the master equipment list, and um, so you can actually then, uh, yeah. Uh, plan uh, the equipment needs based on on an early pace um, with the well design. Um, then we also have multiple different projects ongoing that concerns this topic uh, without going too much into to detail on uh, on on that today. Um, well, yeah, so so I guess you can see that the, the, the road has kind of opened up um, as we've been moving um, forward. Uh, our vision was to build and deliver software for um, well construction and planning. Um, but at this point, uh, we also needed something on the rig side to actually give us feedback on a digital dope. So uh, I mean like comments or uh, lessons learned and, and time logged on activities. Um, and at this point, Outfell was looking for that exact uh, application. So together with uh, Outfell and Equinor, um, the project Rig uh, AMS started, um, and that's kind of where we are today on 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 the Rig uh, side or the contractor side. Um, I think you still call it the uh, Rig AMS in in Outfell, but we call it the RMS. So it's a rig management uh, system, um, and um, we also have an uh, execution view, uh, which is the drill loss view um, of of the dope, um, and I think this is an important point in the way Keystone works. So, so we may have a lot of innovative, intuitive dreams and thoughts of of a project, um, and then together with the client, we can scope this from from basically the best of both worlds, um, and then we. Uh, make a, a product and at some point a new client comes on board um, with new thoughts and other experience that brings the software even further um, and over time then combining um, the knowledge between Keystone and our clients is, is a major key to, to build and um, maintain the best possible software um, so that's in our interest and also uh, our clients' interest, and, and I, my experience is that um, there actually are uh, a big enthusiasm about sharing uh, experiences uh, between companies, and so that's that's good. Um, so. Uh, First off, you can you can either connect uh, DOPs to our time plan or, um, or we have clients that have an agreement with other vendors um, and then they will um, use their own time plan uh, and then we will only uh, provide even the dopes or, or the rig side or we can do the, the dopes and the rig side but not the time plan and that will basically then uh, only send the um, times logged back to, to the time plan of your choice. Um, so, but um, open. So, so the digital, uh, yeah, I can call it procedure uh, authoring tool. Um, former made in in the world, um, the best text editor in the world. Um, 
uh, and you can ask why why would you go away from from the best editor in the world uh, well there's no possibility to collect or enrich or share data points from what it's only free text um, and that's that's the reason why we why we will build the um, our system um, making the DOPs or apps uh, more accessible. Uh, for instance, I've, if someone somewhere uh, saves uh, a dope locally on their computer, it won't be accessible to anyone uh, other than him, um, and you won't find it in, in SharePoint. And then with our system, you can easily find uh, earlier dopes, um, ongoing and planned dopes, um, it's easy to make a contingency dope on the fly uh, when you're stressed and 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 time's burning, um, and you can do that with our library module. Uh, you can plan for offline or parallel activities. Um, so it's basically a build, adjust, or uh, editing, uh, commenting, uh, or signing uh, uh, the dope, depending on the status of the dope in your role, uh, of course. And you can also then ask for feedback from third parties or um, whoever it might be. Um, and I know that you guys, when planning a well or you're an operation or you're a driller or who it might be, um, you use endless uh, of software. Um, and a part of our goal is to collect as much of this data into either dopes or the system, uh, so you can so you can um, yeah, you don't need to work in twenty different tabs uh, on your uh, browser uh, or in different apps. Um, that that's our end goal. And then either then use it to enrich or and then send uh, data back to the other systems. Uh, so we're not. We're not getting rid of the other systems, but we're trying to to um, get as as much data from from uh, for your b benefit. Um, um, RMS execution view. Um, this is the rate contractor software. Um, a digital solution to receive dopes uh, from open um, and then you have the possibility to adjust and enrich it with uh, rig procedures um, and then yeah, of course execute uh, dopes in, in the execution view. Um, and we have seen uh, on, on the pilot we did a couple of years ago on, on, um, on Nuance Vado, um that by getting this uh, dopes up on the screens uh, around the rigs, even if it's in a coffee shop or, or you just have a read access uh, for those who need, uh, it has reduced uh, interference or, or calls to, to the drill with, with about 40 to 50 percent, uh, which is an enormous amount based on how many calls the driller gets per day. Um, Yes, and there's uh, other pros as well, of course, uh, with easy access, um, traceability um, uh, of the checklist coming from um, uh, open as well. Um, you will always work on the latest uh, signed revision. Um, I know how it is uh, on a rig. You can have 10 revisions all in paper. Which one is it that we're actually on at the moment? Um, you will always work uh, on the latest signed revision in, in our system. Uh, but you can, of course, you can go and, and look into the uh, revisions log and see the old ones as well. Um, and then uh, log time uh, based on, on the uh, clock of, of your computer, so, so it's a two, two click uh, uh, execution of a step. Um, yeah, and, and also the, the lessons learned uh, with comments uh, on, on the uh, operation or after action review, I guess we also some call it. Um, yeah, and here's uh, 
as a view of the checklist on on a mobile device. Um, yeah, based on role, uh, the same as you will probably have it in any Word document uh, today. Um, uh, but this can also be uh, be done on a tablet or a computer. Uh, I know that for a fact that a lot of the third parties uh, love the possibility we made with uh, being able to skip a check and leave a comment uh, for the after action review. Um, we're all uh, we're working with uh, a lot of old uh, templates with non-relevant uh, checklists and and with with uh, the possibility here to to actually um, make something better with with skipping and and having everything in one place and instead of uh, having a uh, what's it called uh, a paper uh, outside the DSV uh, office um, so we can actually have traceability here with with the uh, with the use of needing to to check out something. Um, uh, and also, I know uh, some of our clients has uh, made a rule in the system that you actually can't start to execute before all um, checks are are signed off. Um, live report or uh, report view, uh, one of our newest uh, uh, applications. Um, I guess you've all seen the PowerPoints made for the morning status meeting. Um, uh, or even if you're just wondering where where are you in, in the operation today? We've built a, a report view that can basically show you um, the same as as you've been shown in, in the morning meetings. Um, and these are um, uh, Fully customizable for you as a user or you as a user group, uh, depending uh, a bit from from the uh, client's uh, wishes. Um, uh, and then you can actually then choose from from whatever widget that uh, is actually um, uh, available. Um, you can have schematics, live activity, do plan, um, time versus depth, uh, weather look ahead from Dom Geo, for instance, and then yeah, connect it to the operation so you can actually see, okay, in four days we're supposed to do this and the weather is supposed to be like this. Um, and then also kind of start to plan where Okay, maybe there will be time for maintenance. Then, if there's, there will be downtime. Uh, down uh, time, um, for instance. You can see the last twenty-four hours. Where are we? Uh, versus uh, budget time. Um, observation cards. Yeah, daily safety focus. You, you name it. If 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 there's basically a data source, we can we can build a widget and show you the the data in this. Um, so it's very customizable from from um, client to client, but also uh, we have some default ones. Um, yeah, and this is um, the mobile. Uh, uh, device uh, seeing the report view uh, just to show you that 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 it's responsive so you can actually before you even go go to work at morning go in and see uh, how is how are we doing in in operation um, and these are uh, at this moment uh, being installed on screens around um, on the rigs um with the um, I think I think it's in the coffee shops and and one outside the uh, uh, one outside the cafeteria uh, just just so you can uh, see that you've done everything you you need to do uh, before going to lunch. Um, then uh, master plan overview. Even even if it's uh, yeah can work for both operators and contractors uh, contractors. See all your rigs. Uh, be able to see where um, are we doing what. 
Um, are there any lanes or are there any uh, thing where we can uh, put the maintenance? Um, and the same for uh, for um, um, operator, uh, the possibility to to drag and drop uh, between different uh, sides of, of the rig um, and, and have a better overview of, of uh, uh, offline activities or whatever it might be. And um, that's uh, what I got uh, for you today. I don't know if you want the questions now, uh, or if you want to share every or wait with everything until um, the end. I was thinking we go through the presentations first and then uh, have a discussion at the end. OK, perfect. Well, uh, then uh, thank you for your time. Thanks for the thanks for the presentation, Peter. Very good. Good to see what's uh, what's available out there. And then next we have uh, Jan Arel and Otto. If you if I can ask you to share the screen. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Are you seeing my screen now? Yes. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Christian, for the press uh, intro. intro. Uh, and we will today uh, present for you the the experience we had uh, while we uh, implemented digital procedures on uh, this Transocean Norge uh, campaign. Uh, so the agenda for our speech today with me and Uttar is, uh, first of all, I would say, if we were on the Christian Sand conference, I said something about innovation cycles, and I want to repeat that today as well. And then we will uh, show our digital strategy uh, and then the implementation of uh, Keystone in our operations. But you can see it also, I think, as a more general view on implementation of digital procedure. The experiences so far, pros and cons, and, and uh, what's uh, in the pipeline. Uh, how do we uh, create value out of this? So I will just start, and I want to repeat this one because it's. Uh, I think it's very important when you uh, I will call digital procedure new technology. Uh, and when you do this in an organization, I can guarantee one thing, and that, that is that this change will uh, be painful. And uh, the users and everyone will kind of, um, you will not have only positive experience, uh, at least my experience uh, introducing new stuff in the organization is that you will go through a period where the users don't see the, the value, uh, the system is not uh, up and running fully and so on. And I've called it the value of pain. But uh, my advice for those of you who want to introduce for uh, digital dope or whatever new stuff, uh, show this graph or show this to the ones that are affected and also be open that the, there will be some pain in the start here before we can take start to take out the potential uh, of what the new technology can do. And another thing to be aware of, uh, what, what are the main challenges of implementing new technology? The technology in itself, it's not that, uh, it's not the biggest pain point. Uh, it most likely it's the human part, which is more or less 90% of the pain. And especially now with new technologies, it's before you bought a car uh, and it was this car from this vendor. Now you buy a product that actually it's very important that uh, it's a multiple ownership. And for like Keystone, we uh, we are the operator and then we have the vendor, which is Keystone for in this case. And you have the contract that was its Transocean. And in the middle of everything there, you have the user that has to use this. Uh, and the technology today is in is kind of uh, uh, we say integration is good, but integration or um, the the ability to be a microservice or whatever also come with a lot of um, uh, challenges when it comes to connect it to uh, and all the other uh, sources you want to connect it to. And also with uh, with new technology, it comes uh, and it's not a full product yet because it hasn't been used and all uh, no products just arrives and are perfect at the start. So the product needs to meet the, the market and the market need to react and then you need to develop the technology to 
to actually uh, fit the, the market. So also this, to be aware of this new technology, the, it's take care of the humans in the transition because the technology that is usually uh, the easiest part. And some of the criteria that we have found being a good uh, basis for implementing new uh, technology is kind of try to have long-term co uh, collaboration uh, with common visions goals. It seems fluffy, but if you have different strat uh, strategic visions on the future on, or on whatever, you will find it hard to collaborate on these new solutions. And also you need to be effective and you need to do quick adaption of the technology and um, you need to be lean in this first phase. So you show the users that you are flexible and try to adapt the project to real life. And you need to have strong user involvement, uh, both in the development and also in the implementation. Uh, and th that's a key factor. Uh, and also that the technology in, in itself, the, it, um, new technology, it, uh, when it releases, it's not perfect, but it should either, uh, should not be um, f the first version either. So, so you need to find a balance there where the technology is actually ready for the market, but not fully set. So you are able to adapt it to, to real life. And be open on that, that uh, most likely we need to do adaptions and for all parties, be aware of it and work structured uh, structurally together to make that happen. Okay, enough of the philosophy. Uh, and then uh, more towards uh, Wintersaldea, where do we want to go? Within Drilling Wells, we have a vision of delivering perfect wells. And we believe that digitalization and technology is just a lever to to achieve uh, perfect wells. It's not a goal in itself. So in our uh, strategy and vision, we have uh, digitalization and technology as a pillar. Uh, we want to work smart with, uh, with data to make right decisions. We shall digitalize our well planning process and offshore execution. We shall drive further automate automation and smart digitalization offshore and also onshore. So this is the pillar. It's not very uh, prescriptive, but it's functional. And we see digital procedures part of this uh, strategy. So why do we want to go for digital procedures in Wintersaldea? Uh, Petter talked, uh, touched upon some of the points. We want to have a seamless dope distribution across the operation. Um, the situational awareness, both offshore and onshore. So uh, when uh, everyone's aware of what's happening and can react, and when uh, and you are also uh, more on top of the ball, uh, even um, all the parties, even if you are a roughneck or uh, whoever on the rig, are now able to see where we are and can also, it's easier to mitigate or, or it come with the, suggestions or or actually contribute in a better way. Of course, the less paper administration on the rig, everyone who has worked as a drilling engineer on the rig, the, the, you are uh, your uh, printer, it's your best uh, and worst friend. Uh, and like Petra talked about, better revision and access control. Uh, dope library for ease and uh, reuse. Uh, that is uh, easy said, not maybe so easy done yet, but still that is kind of something in the future we see as a big benefit. Data integration possibilities, we'll come back to that, but it's not so visible now uh, in Winters Aldea, but that is one of where the key for value actually is buried, that we're actually now going from paper, working with paper uh, and manual work over to to trans, uh, and transition over to data, working with data. And also tag on contracted strategy. And this is a bit back to our philosophy. We would never start with digital procedures on Transocean Orga if not Transocean were, uh, wanted to do this. We have tried before to force uh, other, uh, our collaborators into new systems, but we are not big enough. So we have a strategy that we tag along with the contractor strategy if it fits our strategy. And in this uh, example with digital dope, that really uh, fitted. So that's um, so that is key. Okay, and then 
now actually Uta will bring us into the real life and talk about how we what we did when uh, this year when we have uh, implemented the digital procedures uh, in Vintasaldea. Thank you. Uh, yes, so we had uh, an initial uh, process uh, for selecting vendors and as Jan Arel said, uh, the partner that we had on the uh, uh, drilling contractor side was uh, was an extremely important part of um, the uh, decision. So we uh, we actually concluded with Keystone uh, already in February uh, this year. Um, and uh, as a software as a service, it's uh, the the implementation is rather swift. So we could start the uh, user training already in March. So we did um, uh, one to one training for uh, all the uh, all the concerned stuff for the upcoming uh, operation. Uh, and we let that go for for quite uh, some period. So we we uh, provided um, uh, this training when it sit, fitted the calendar. And we also tried to get it as close to when they wanted to use it uh, as we could. So we could um, uh, have the, uh, the knowledge at the top of the mind so they were easier to get going. Um, then uh, in April, uh, we had the acceptance test. Uh, and that is quite interesting because if you do acceptance tests, you normally have very good knowledge of what you're getting. Uh, so in this case, we knew the product uh, fairly well. We've been training on it, but we hadn't, we didn't have any sort of practical experience on it. So we, we based the acceptance test on the specifications and the, the product that we got from, um, from uh, Keystone and also from a best knowledge about how to benefit from it. Uh, so uh, I think uh, I think the acceptance test was good. Um, we we had um, we went through it quite quite well, uh, but it would be even better if uh, if I guess that we were uh, more uh, experienced with it. But this was actually in the start of the implementation. So in May, uh, this year we we uh, went go live. We started the operation. We started uh, with the um, the Keystone dope. We already had a team on shore who started writing the dopes, um, and we saw that uh, there were all sorts of support for the system, uh, from the enthusiast to the rather more reserved. Uh, and we tried to uh, to. Uh, to, to, to meet their uh, requirements and, and we try to sort of uh, mitigate all the uh, uh, teething issues that you could expect for something that is starting up. Uh, but then we uh, started also the continuous st uh, status meetings with, uh, with Keystone, with the vendor, and that has been extremely important throughout because it sort of secured us a very good dialogue with, uh, with the vendor. Uh, they are aware of our issues uh, and our priorities, and we, as a, as a user, develop as we go along with this dialogue uh, with the vendor. Okay. And then, uh, and then we have a. And and then uh, in June, uh, we had uh, a contingency uh, in the operation. It wasn't well enough prepared. Um, and then the uh, paper DOP started. Uh, so it was a fallback uh, to, to Word. And it was really sort of spreading a stagnation in the implementation. It was an acceptance that we could go back to paper when we liked and people jumped on the bandwagon because that meant less pain, uh, more of the old, uh, of the old way. Uh, and that was uh, was uh, challenging it but but then what we saw was we got management support uh, to curb it to to uh, put an end to it so yes we are going back to the digital dope uh, so that happened uh, so we had uh, sort of a, a communication uh, into the user community saying that now we're going to actually use it so we we, we implemented a, a relaunch and then we got an update uh, and uh, we had a, a, an update already in August after the summer holidays 
And in uh, November 23, uh, so November this year, so a few weeks ago, we had a major upgrade where we looked at the usability, the uh, the uh, uh, the way that users uh, communicated with the program. And also we've started having coaches offshore to uh, be with us, and, and that has been extremely useful. So what we're seeing also is that this is our Im Im implementation plan. And then, of course, um, the, uh, the, the contractor has their own experiences. So during more and more, now we are collaborating more and more also on Keystone with the um, drilling uh, op operation, and that is actually giving us uh, a lot of benefits. So I think we can go to the next one, please. Yeah, so uh, one thing that we, we see uh, early on, it was that the work process wasn't, that we practiced wasn't totally supported. So the, the uh, user interface was sort of classic IT uh, user interface, didn't quite mirror the way that people worked. Um, so we needed to address that. Uh, one thing that you had also in these DOP meetings was one manning the uh, computer and moving up and down. And the way that it worked was that the um, participants in these workshops uh, lost overview. They, 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 the screen jumped up and down and it was a bit sort of erratic. Uh, so what we would like to have seen was a bit more sort of domain knowledge on uh, on the development side of the uh, of the um, program. So we've been actually spending quite some time in trying to to convey this knowledge over to the uh, to the uh, Keystone team. So offshore, we have seen bugs. Uh, some of them have been uh, uh, a bit worrying. They've been uh, quite serious. Keystone has been able to respond to them in a timely manner, which is great. Uh, we've seen uh, uh, the uh, overview of the procedures been lacking at times. Uh, but we also have the uh, access management for uh, for the use for the system it, it's, it's a bit demanding the way it's set up with our uh, various uh, various organizations that need access to AD and the IT's uh, infrastructure and so on. Um, and also we need to to uh, focus on the signing um, uh, offshore so we get the right people to sign in. So we set up some rules um, and we need that to actually to work. Uh, and we, yeah, so so uh, as, as always, there is a paper culture out there. That's what they're used to. That's what they really like. Uh, so it is a, it is a challenge to make that change. Uh, forward so that uh, when we had this uh, um, loss uh, in in um, in June, uh, we saw that was uh, becoming rather popular with quite a few people. So they, we haven't really uh, managed to demonstrate the benefits of doing it digital quite yet, but that is where we're trying to uh, to achieve. And I'm actually very very optimistic that we are going to see the these benefits in not too far future. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, yeah. So uh, we do have uh, uh, organized meetings now with Transocean, uh, the people in charge of Keystone implementation there, and the training. And we have the Keystone team here, and Jan Arl is also getting himself involved. And we have Keystone. Uh, and we, I think we are meeting now every, every two weeks. Uh, and following up on uh, development priorities. Um, and we are seeing that uh, we get all the people, uh, different stakeholders in line. Um, do we, we have, a, we have a, a spreadsheet with the user feedback and the bugs, and those are followed up on a weekly basis. Uh, and we do have the super users here at um, uh, uh, Bintasar. Uh, that is continuously giving us feedback and we're sort of providing status to all their their input. So we're trying to to uh, to be agile to improve fast. the The big thing that is we're looking for now is the uh, procedures 2.0 where we are seeing 
some significant improvements to the user interface in, in particular. So what we see is that the coaches um, onshore and certainly offshore are extremely important to the success of this. We need leadership and management to actually take ownership to this uh, change. Uh, and we need to see the uh, procedure transformation uh, being being successful. So and, and, and also and just to cut in the other what I'm maybe that point a bit, but we going help the help from getting the uh, the dope from a world format into actually so you 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 don't get engineers to get the, the first procedures into to open that was a a big help so you don't then you have some less uh, noise from the engineering department in a way yeah hmm. yeah uh, i think we're uh, we should probably go to the next slide please Okay, I think I, maybe I can take this one. Yeah, sure. Uh, because now it's only two left. Uh, we are out of time. Uh, we had two minutes more, but I, I'd very quickly just to say, what is the value today? Or with the world process, we had the paper procedure. We did the execution when it ended up with a new updated paper procedure. It's an analog process. What where the value is? Is go with going digital. Petter said it, uh, Uta said it, and I want to repeat it. With the digital procedure, we start to, to work with data instead of paper. So that means you can get input from other stuff. Uh, you can, um, and you, now it's a combination of some analog, uh, but you still can get the input from other computers. And in the execution, you can add on the real time data. And then you can say, what. Uh, it's just your imagination that is actually what you can get out of this. And I set up just a small roadmap here where we are now and still maybe a, a bit, a little bit in the red zone in the valley of pain. But I think now getting on to the next steps and the possibilities and this list is just me two minutes just putting down uh, stuff. I think uh, as an industry, this possibilities um, chapter is really big and I think I said 2026 here and I think give us a year or one to two years and I think actually we are into this and of course the future the automated goal here is that we <laughs> it's on the path to to automated drilling if we get there I don't know but still there is a lot of value to just get into the next steps and possibilities I don't want to go into the details here, and uh, I guess we will uh, share the presentation. But uh, going into a data-driven, uh, data-driven process instead of paper-driven process, combined with real-time data, that is a valuable step to take. So I guess the questions they are to the end. So then we were only two minutes over time. <laughs> Sorry for that, Christian. No worries. Take care. Take your time. Thank you. Make a, a very valuable point uh, that you pointed out. Thing. It needs to. It needs to ultimately create value, as you said. And then uh, brings us to the last presentation of today. Before we have some time for questions, Tor, if you want to share your screen. Yes. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, so now we're getting the um, <clears throat> drilling contractor uh, view on uh, this uh, same topic. As uh, Peter said, we call it a rig activity management system, rig AMS. <clears throat> we see uh, the RMS as a type of, uh, of system. So I'm uh, working with um, digital digitalization projects, both in um, Oddfield Technology, which uh, manage the uh, uh, drilling operations on fixed installations and for the drilling our uh, eight uh, semi-submersible uh, rigs um first i'd say a bit about our digitalization strategy and then i got a challenge to um, say something about why we think that the rig contractor should be the owner of the RMS, the execution part, and not just use whatever the operating company chooses. And then as a third point, I'll say a bit about our implementation and our experiences so far with the digital DOP. So that's from uh, Equinor, Johan Sverdrup. First, why do we 
want to digitalize. I may be, you know, smashing in open doors, but uh, we do this because we want to improve our efficiency. We, our rigs are well factories, and we also have what we call a digitalization strategy, which is the digital well factory. So we want to improve the efficiency of the rig factory, but also to improve HSE, obviously. Part of that is, for instance, uh, situational awareness, which you can improve by uh, giving better solutions to, uh, to people. And not to forget, simplify. And I have a mantra in my digitalization projects. We do need to simplify the work processes and the work tools for people because then they will choose to use it. And I think it's a well-known mantra in our business that we have to make it easier to do things the right way and not uh, uh, present hurdles for people with new systems. Here is a picture of a uh, scene from the driller on board in the driller's cabin. And I must say, learning about how they work, they are really conductors of a very complex orchestra when they, I call it orchestration of processes. So they have a lot of information sources and a lot of systems that they need to use in order to run, manage, orchestrate the drilling process. One of those being uh, perhaps the uh, operating procedures. Now in a uh, paper format uh, in on many rigs, and then we introduce another screen. And we have seen the development where operating companies, service providers, ourselves, we just knock on the door and introduce a new screen. So we can have a complexity with you know up to 12, 15 and more screens that the driller has to relate to in a very complex picture. We really need to simplify. But that means also when we're going into uh, uh, rig management systems, digital DOP, simplification is very important for us. And as Yanaril said, I totally agree. It's the, the technology is not the difficult part. Uh, concentrating on the humans and human factors, very important. And we're also seeing that from PSA uh, now, which is a very good thing. High focus in our business now on the human factors. Very good. So, to our strategy, as I said, uh, a uh, drilling rig is a well factory, and the digital strategy for that rig would be a strategy for a digital well factory. So, we have a lot of different systems. Um, we have competence management systems, we have maintenance systems where we go into more and uh, more advanced maintenance uh, principles, uh, also using uh, AI, stuff like that. We have, we want to have just-in-time logistics. Um, we have uh, collaboration and integration with systems for uh, a lot of uh, third parties involved in the operations. We want to have a optimal inventory, good inventory management, and also more and more drive towards uh, automation and autonomous drilling, which many of the operators have in their strategy. So to the digital DOP and RMS systems, that is a very important part of the systems in this area, the drilling operations area. Um, and or not only because we want a simplified, more efficient uh, work process around the drilling, supporting the drilling operations, planning and execution, but also because we see integration possibilities. Because we can integrate, for instance, the operations, um, the information that we have about um, logistics, we can link the execution of the drilling activities to logistics to make sure that we have the right equipment in place at the right time, because the activity can tell us which equipment we need and so on. We can show the open spots for maintenance, because challenge number one for our maintenance people on the rigs is access to the drilling equipment. Because we're so efficient, it's in use all the time. So if we can give them 
real-time information about the open slots for maintenance. That's a good thing. So that's what we promised them. So to the uh, RMS strategy, um, grossly simplified, of course. <clears throat> so I call it the concept. It's not for uh, any IT guys here. It's not the it's not the systems architecture by far. But what we see is that in a early planning stage, let's say 70-80% of work is done by the operator as uh, as uh, Wintershall Dea now uh, presented. So we have started, uh, as I said, with a digital DOP. So we have a, a DOP authoring tool. That tool has an API to our part of the system, <clears throat> which is the, for the execution. So the authoring and the uh, approval of the DOP is done in the operator's system. That means our people are uh, uh, drilling section leader, for instance, will be approved, approving in the operator's part of the system. So when that um, DOP is approved, it will be um, uh, transformed to, to the execution view, which I'll so show you in a minute. So ready for execution on board uh, the rig, ready for the driller and every other uh, crew. So all parties involved in the execution will use a system on board the rig. So uh, third parties, roused about um, uh, assistant driller, driller, everybody who has tasks in checklists will use our system. They will be a user of the system. And we are now also discussing how we can integrate with automation and control systems. So there's a study ongoing where both HMH and NOE have been involved. I'm sure Keystone can tell more about that, but we see this uh, cooperation as very important and, and we also aim for interoperability. So that's why we think that the rig management system should be um, the rig uh, contractors system because we can integrate with all the other parts that are showed in the strategy picture. So that means we can make sure that the logistics are um, on track when there are changes in the execution uh, plan. Um, as I said, we have started the digital DOP. Uh, as Petter presented, there are more elements uh, to come and um, activity planning, uh, other tools that we can integrate into this for the driller to make his everyday uh, simpler and uh, uh, make sure that he has um, uh, all information available uh, in real time. Very important for us, um, this part of the system. Please note questions. I won't go into all details about this, but um, I can answer questions afterwards. So to uh, our status, as Peter said, we have been uh, piloting uh, the Keystone solution on uh, Johan Sverdrup. Um, for all practical purposes, uh, it has been their uh, system now since October last year, so more than a year. We have had some um, upgrades, of course. Um, and the user interface has been uh, changed. What's been good about this is that we have managed to involve the end users in a good way, and they have seen that because Eastern has been able to, <clears throat> to deliver uh, improvements and new functionality rapidly, um, they can see that it really works to, to give feedback. Uh, they are being heard, they see that uh, their suggestions uh, uh, being implement, implemented in a system. So, um, and a sort of a fun fact, we had a period in uh, October when we had the integration to Equinor's um, authoring tool, uh, which is from Horizon 56. We had a short period where they had to go back to paper. And that was not very well received. We had, we had the people talk about talking about going back to the Stone Age and stuff like that. So they were happy when the digital dope uh, was uh, back again and they could uh, use the uh, screen. 
So we are now in a, pro uh, in a state where we have now uh, an agreement with Equinor to roll out the system on all the the, the three semi-submersibles we have for uh, them. So that will start uh, now. And we also uh, are in discussions with uh, OKBP, so we'll probably start implementing there in uh, January. Um, we'll also implement on the other fixed installation that we, uh, where we run the drilling operations for uh, Equinor, that is uh, the Hadron and the Mariner uh, uh, rigs. So we'll have quite a big portfolio. And what is good also is that we've been able to test, you know, how our system on board the rig can uh, can play and integrate with different solutions on the operator side. Because OKBP they run Keystone, and the Equinor run uh, their competitor Horizon 56. The APA works; the rig can use the same system. So when Deep Sea Stavanger now starts for Equinor with Horizon 56, they will start working for OKBP uh, sometime in uh, 25. Uh, there will be no changes on board the rig. The only change will be on the operator authoring tool side, but everything will be the same on board the rig, which is good from, from our point of view. I was asked also to show a bit of this. No, now you, you saw Peter uh, showing, but what we are running now, this is just a, a random DOP that I've <laughs> uh, copied from uh, from uh, Jan Sverdrup. But what you're seeing here is the same structure as you will find in the paper DOP. So that tells a bit about the transition or, or the change for the driller, because he'll see the activity description, which is the same as the old DOP. Um, he will see the uh, checkpoints in a lot easier way. And also, you know, the, the checking of checkpoints is a lot easier than doing that on, uh, on a paper, on a wall, which I did uh, earlier. Now they, uh, everybody can have a tool and the driller can see instantly when a, uh, a preparation check is uh, being done. A um, lot less traffic on the radio and phone to uh, for a driller to check that everything is on track. You'll see also uh, that uh, the system has uh, all uh, attachments that's also in the uh, paper DOP. So really the change is not very big. Uh, they, they can find the content, but but the the, um, the transition is really a change anyway. So I support you know Winterhals uh Winterhals Jan uh, um saying that that uh, uh, we we must be aware that this is a change for people. Uh, I think we have a every we, we must recognize that everybody had, everybody have a natural reflex to oppose change. We like what we have, uh, so we have to be good at telling people and and, and focusing on what's what's in it for me, uh, what's my benefits, and for a driller, we are seeing now that the feedback from them is that they have less contacts on the phone and on radio from other people on the rig from onshore about what's happening now, what's the status now, what activity are we in, because people can check themselves uh, in a system, uh, which is good. Say a bit about uh, how we did the um, uh, training and the the change process, because this is uh, important. Um, we've did, done the same as Winter Charles uh, presented. We have done a one-to-one -one training uh, for the uh, driller, assistant driller, planners on board. Everybody else have been uh, uh, attending team sessions for training. We also have an e-learning um, available, both for drillers and for the uh, what we call the checklist uh, users. We have used offshore coaches and will continue with offshore coaches. The offshore coaches are um, when when it's possible, we we pick um, assistant drillers as the coaches. We give them special training and attention, and um, and uh, then they 
our the liaison uh, on board, uh, do extra training of the crew on board, make sure that new crew uh, from service providers, for instance, come on board, they receive uh, training, they get attention, they get uh, the access to the system, all these practicalities that are you know, easy in an office with an um, uh, office support, but then not so easy when you're uh, offshore. Um, a benefit that we have seen is that when we have offshore coaches, they also become super users. So when the uh, introduction, the implementation period is done, uh, we automatically have super users. Uh, which is good when we have uh, new changes and new people uh, on board because they may train the new people that uh, get on the cruise. And also we've seen that 24-7 support from uh, from Keystone has uh, worked and been very good. I must say we haven't had very many technical issues. Mostly now we see that the support requests are for access, new people uh, needing access. So we're also waiting for the system. That means they, uh, we, we can uh, grant access uh, ourselves uh, offshore. But I think the offshore coaching uh, has been very important for, uh, for the success. I picked some uh, quotes uh, from observation cards on board. Um, um, we see that the planner on Sverdrup, we have an offshore planner doing the uh, final touch on the DOPs. He says that uh, his workday is uh, easier. I remember my first visit three years ago, I asked uh, the planner, what can I do for you? I'm from IT, what can I do for you? What's the most important to make your everyday easier? And I said, I want a a uh, Xerox machine that can sort and uh, staple the DOPs that will make my work day easier. So, well, he didn't get that, but he get, got the system. So what we're seeing is now that the change, the updates, new revisions is a lot quicker. The approval process is a lot quicker. Uh, we have more certainty that everybody has access to the right version of the DOP because in the paper-based system, we have had confusions that people don't have the same version, which is not good. Um, so that's also feedback from the planner. Service uh, provider, same thing. Uh, easier to get uh, access to uh, updated information. Um, also, the uh, drilling supervisors, which is Equinor's uh, drilling supervisor, uh, supervisor uh, says that when people can uh, access the information themselves, a um, lot less uh, contact uh, people wanting status, what's happening now. And the driller, um, driller and assistant drillers, very happy with the solution. Um, they can see now preparation checks in the system, uh, more certainty that preparations are uh, in time and also um, easier to, to read and find information in the DOPs. So overall, we, um, we think uh, it has been a success. Um, we have had a very good cooperation with Equinor, also good cooperation with uh, AKBP. Uh, and I think the cooperation, as um, you know, said, between you know the operating company, uh, recontractor, and software vendor, very important because what we really want to do is to provide a better tool for all parts of the crew. Um, and I think uh, the way we have been able to cooperate so far, I think we've achieved that. So that's good. That was it for me. Thank you. Well, thank you, Tor. So, uh, I think it's very, very good to hear that you said um, the people want it back once it's gone. So that really shows that it actually arrived. No? But with that, uh, if, uh, I'll open the floor to questions. Yes. Please, uh, go ahead. 
Um, really appreciate the the odd fell's view of sort of saying that they need to own the rap DOP, whatever we're going to call it. Uh, and I think the point where you show the drillers cabin and just slapping on more screens and iPads doesn't really make their lives any easier. I think from traditionally it's been the operators pushing their their version of the same uh, word file, uh, different logo on the top road top corner but then i think what we're looking at now though is we as the operator do a lot of the planning set up our limitations for each section and now we need to find a way to sort of push that uh, through an api probably into your system but then how agnostic will that receiver the basically the rig contractors receiver be in terms of we're using slb at the moment in a few months, we might be using a Halliburton um, sort of. Ha my my task is sort of to make sure that my engineers don't spend too much time copy pasting. Uh, they haven't studied five years and gained a lot of experience to sit copy pasting text. So that's sort of how do we make sure we push these uh, seamlessly into the rig contractors sphere of control, I guess. Any ideas basically? I could uh, answer that. I'm sure also Petr is eager to. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I said, you know, uh, we the execution uh, we uh, is important. That that's part of our uh, portfolio system because we we uh, really need this to to integrate in a, in the bigger picture. Um, the answer is really cooperation and APIs. I can say that we've had discussions together with Keystone and SLB. And my understanding is that SLB is ready to cooperate with uh, Keystone to uh, to uh, uh, integrate. We now have two companies, as I said, Horizon 56 and uh, Keystone. They are competitors, but we have a common uh, we, we have an IP API that makes sure that we as a contractor uh, can use the same system. So I think that should be possible also with SLB. Might be a question of about who picks up the bill though. So yeah. Yeah, well, both SLB and also uh, uh, Halliburton, uh, of course, if that's where you're moving. Um. I'm not sure, but might be. I think this uh, this seamless integration or envision seamless integration from whatever operator picks up the rig and the driller having the same kind of uh, structure in front of him, the same the same view all the time, no no change basically, or or as little change as possible is actually very very important. And uh, I think that's uh, that's that's really good to see that, that this is uh, happening kind of now. <clears throat> But I have a question maybe to you, Jan you, know, you, you mentioned that uh, creating value is, uh, is of course, the, the driver behind it all. But then uh, how, how, how do we measure the value that we, that we create with a solution like that? I can imagine that's very difficult, especially if you, as you mentioned it, if we, if we go through the value of pain, you may get the question, is it, is it worse to continue? Is, uh, do you need to, I guess you need to convince people at some point. Yes, but we are in the first year. We have we haven't done we have this done this for a half year now. And uh, I would say when you say the most important to create value, well, what is value? It's it's uh, like like the tool set. It's of course zero HSE and incidents, and it, it's kind of we want to deliver wells perfect wells, and this is a tool for that. And we we believe that uh, uh, with um, Get uh, having the digital dope. We we think we will see uh, less. Okay, value for us as an operator. I think we will see less time spent on better quality input uh, for the operation. So now talking on the planning side, because what we see, we uh, we still use a lot of uh, manual uh, work to read experiences and and all all this typical digital uh, talk. But this is really a tool 
that I believe will help us use less time on, on quality planning. And we, we might need to measure that, but still maybe we are in the strategy thinking. We have done a strategic choice to follow Transocean. So they have the same RMS on all their rigs and we are not being the custom uh, customized customer that still are using Word files uh, sent by uh, email or whatever. So um, I would say we are still in the transition, uh, but maybe there are others here that have thoughts on how to measure the value of it. If you want to have it in money, if anyone have any reflections on it. Okay. I, I can just uh, just comment on that because a lot of the value when you introduce new technology is um, uh, is covering yes. off well, like yeah. dark costs. Perfect. So um, there is an, an sort of intrinsic um, inefficiency in all organizations. We do things the way we've always done it. Um, and then uh, there we could do things better, but you don't measure you. You may not want to discuss or you may not be aware of where the inefficiencies are, so they're not measured. So when you're introducing a successful system, then uh, suddenly life feels better. You are more sort of content. You're you feel you're working faster, but there is actually lacking numerical evidence to support that. Uh, and, and that's a very common um, uh, problem when you introduce new technology that you 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 don't really have a baseline. So, so uh, the challenge is, is more to define a baseline than actually measure improvement. I can, uh, can relate to that then. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting view. Are there any, any other questions? Not that I had, a, had another one to you, maybe better. I guess um, when you move from a paper copy, which is something extremely simple now you sit there you have a written instructions you flip a page you see the schematic that you want to whereas now in the system you you look at the screen you want to see a schematic or or, or a drawing or whatever i guess it's uh from the beginning it's a couple of clicks you may not have the, the right one or, or you don't get the one you want it's it's a different thing you you, you were looking for how do you think you can make and and the thing for you mentioned it as well so there's the dope as we have it now in the in the on, on the screen is more or less a, a mirror of how the the paper copy used to look like. What do you think? How how you how can we? Is this where it uh, will stop now? Is is this where we want to be, or or do you think we can we can bring that even further? No, I, I said as as uh, a part of the way we work, and now uh, I think the next move. For for us actually is to uh, sit down with all our clients on on the operator side uh, and have an open transparent uh, discussion on how do we actually want this to become in in the future. Uh, and I think there's yeah there's pretty pretty uh, um, pretty pretty uh, it may might be it might be uh, different. Um, Thoughts and solutions, but um, I definitely do not think that this is where we stop now. <laughs> well, yeah, I could maybe give some what my wishes are, because yeah. when and then it's back to maybe value creation. But now I'm maybe science fiction and a vision. But of course, when we make a drilling program, which start now the SOR, the statement of the requirement, is also a PDF document. So we're still working with documents, but. Going over to Keystone and Open is a way. As I said, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a data, uh, it's a data system where you actually should put in data and not text. We are doing text now, but uh, it is a transition. So when you make a plan, Christian, you should be, uh, you should have generated dopes automatic uh, suggestions of your dope based on your time plan, and what stated in the drilling program. Most of the Data should already be in there. So now when you open uh, the digital procedure, you have a suggestion of a dope for all your operations. And in the start, you need to adjust them much, but then of course it will be based on best practices and so on. 
So I think that's where you need to see where the next step, we are not stopping now. And I say it again, this is, must be the start. This must be the start. Now we have transferred over to platforms that can receive data from other sources. Word is kind of this, I, I still like the hand, it, we are not using the pen, we are using a tester tool, but it's still kind of writing it by hand. We need to stop that. Now we need to do, um, do um, it should be a tool that replicates what we do when uh, when we do our best and we need to reuse uh, that and so on. So I think the biggest step here is that we are switched to a new platform, which is open for input from other um, tools. And then we need to live uh, now in an area when we have uh, both you, uh, Christian, still need to do some copy paste and writing on your keyboard. And, but then you, I guess you will see more and more data coming in because based on what sections you are planned in your time plan, or maybe the 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 dope the dope numbers will come in, and then you say, well, this yeah, it's ninety percent correct. I need a one more dope, okay, and blah blah. So I think that's the we we can't stop now. We, we have just started. That is my mm -hmm. kind of main comment. I very much agree. And then we are where uh, what Pereira said at the beginning. We we haven't started for five years. Uh, copy paste and it's a lot of uh, it fills a lot of our day now we, we copy from the SOR to the building program from the building program to the dope hmm. this uh, I agree it frees, it frees up a lot a lot of time to do valuable or more valuable stuff yeah, Marit. yeah hello uh, my name is Marit Övle I'm I'm a little bit on the side of this, uh, on the operational side, but I'm, I'm sitting on the bulk portfolio and the rig portfolio in Equinor. So a lot before the actually the operation starts, we, but I'm sort of working digital too. So it's we have some common interest <laughs> because it's it's the business case and what did we say and what did we get is very very important. So so to analyze the really details of why the costs are different when we end up in the other end. Uh, it's interesting to link all the data together. So, so uh, my vision is to sort of uh, we're creating now a common identifier for our business cases. Uh, we, of course, we have had the the well the official well name for a long time, but it's interesting how the data architecture with uh, getting these experiences from the operations into how the rig perform and how the costs uh, do and how the uh, the operations go the single operations it's it's interesting so to, so how the uh, do, how do we get the data back into what did we say? What did we get on the cost side? I, I don't know the, uh, about the architecture now, but I, that, this is my sort of side on it. That it would be inter interesting to know. I, I don't know, even know who's doing this in Equinor. So, <laughs> but I, I, I have the vision to sort of connect all these data together so that we enable the learning. Uh, yeah, from from the very beginning of the thoughts of a well maybe four to ten years before it actually happens so when you end up in the other side yeah um, any comments that you have on that data architecture uh, storing the data with both the operator and the vendors and with all the different taggings uh, sorting it by well sorting it by rig sorting it by operations sorting it by detailed activities uh, if you have any co uh, comments that would be welcome yeah I can probably start, but uh, um, I would say one of one of our biggest selling points and and something I did mention in the presentation because then I would be talking for days. But um, uh, it's what we call call the smart hub. So it's it's a service laying in in the bottom of uh, all of our uh, softwares, uh, which is basically in orchestrating or or or. Um, a way of restricting data uh, and also uh, storing and 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 making it easier to share and collect uh, data uh, both into to our system and and to others i know if uh, anyone uh, uh, has one, but yes i uh, i share uh, your thoughts marit and i think uh, we are not a big player of intersaldea and we are relying on you, Marit, and maybe Arco BP. 
but the, the the data structure it's quite it's kind of boring to talk about but i think that is the key to the next step we we need to tag uh, uh data in a in a structured manner and i my dream is that we do that <laughs> similar across uh, the operators and also the, and then yeah and contractors and so on it's like vitsml uh, yeah. you you need this structure and um, we don't have the vitsml for uh, at on 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 this yet but maybe you Marit, can say something if if you have a lot of projects on getting that uh, to create uh, we have a few projects Mm. But uh, we have this common identifier for the well project because we see that uh, the well starts a lot earlier than than it has digitally started in Equinor. So we, because on the drawing board when it, when it's just a target in the ground uh, mm. and and also an intervention, it could be it, it's an ID somewhere. So that we start actually digitally tag them very much earlier on. But the hard part is the structure in uh, what we count in a different system. I myself, I've been uh, with Rig Strategy since 2013, and and since then I've, I've operated the light well intervention portfolio, lots of uh, assets, and it's how count how you count things. Uh, so so it's and we still have a long way to go. <laughs> so it's uh, but it's uh, I, I won't take the focus away from the dupe because I think that but this is a key to the operations uh, and and to find what uh, if you want to send out a robot there to sort of get the learnings and to, to store all the comments and all the experiences and the checklists and the lack of signatures or <laughs> what goes wrong and what what is good and to to learn that we need to count it and know what we're counting uh, yeah but uh, Yes, no, <laughs> we have some way to go. Uh... Very good. Yes, thanks all. Um, we are, we've almost reached the end. There's, uh, if there's anything else. If not, I can maybe share a, a few words from uh, from a user perspective as well. I've been uh, on board since we've uh, since we've started with the digital dope, as you mentioned, and then also I've been. Uh, one of the one of the users out on the rig, same as uh, here in the office. I can uh, I can um, very much relate to uh, the value of uh, pain as you as you mentioned it in our, and I think was uh, I guess was one of the fine balances is that it needs it, as you said it it can't be and will never be a final product that you just throw out there and just works for everybody, but it needs to be it needs to be good in a way that uh, once you open it. First of all, the login needs to needs to happen smoothly. That sh that can't be the first problem, and then you just instantly need to see this is uh, th th this this may work for me, and then and then only if you see only if you see value for yourselves very early, then you can also push through if something doesn't work because then you run the risk that you that people just drop it and and uh, and get really upset with it. I think. But I think so far it's uh, it's developing uh, very good. I can I can say from my experience. No, very good. But then uh, thanks all. Thanks for the presentations. Thanks for the for the good comments uh, for the discussion at the end. And um, I hope to see you all again. Have a good day. <laughs>